Roger. So today I wanted to talk about prophecy. Ooh. One of those scary topics. We, we, we tend not to talk a lot about it in church, um, partially because it's complicated. You know, and um, uh, a 10 minute sermon is not necessarily the time to unpack all that that means. But in the story of Jeremiah today, we have a really wonderful example of how prophecy might be deemed to operate. So to give you the context, Jeremiah has been put in prison. Uh, well, he's in the guard's courtyard, which means he's in prison in Jerusalem. And he's in prison because he's going around, this is while Zedekiah is the king, and he's going, the Babylonians are coming and they're going to wipe us out. Now that's not necessarily particularly spiritual knowledge from God. It's maths. The Babylonians have a well-trained army with like a gajillion soldiers, all with good weaponry. We've got a few guards and a couple of shepherds with a stick. The Babylonians are going to win, says Jeremiah. And Zedekiah is getting all cranky about this. He goes, you can't go around saying these things. People are going to feel upset. It's like the Babylonians are going to win. And Jeremiah is going, that's exactly what's going to happen. This is part of prophecy. It's looking at the world and seeing it as it is and proclaiming it as it is. To see the world and say, this is what is going on. And to also say, this is where God is in this situation. In 1974, there was an Australian band called Skyhooks. And they released horror movie right there on my TV. And when I first heard it, I thought it was awesome. Because I liked the I liked the guitar and they looked great. And it took me a while to realize that they weren't, they weren't watching some B-grade slasher horror movie. They were talking about the news on the TV. That's the horror movie they were talking about. And it could be really easy to kind of get depressed and to go, Jeremiah. 900 years before Jesus, give or take. People, look at the world. The Babylonian army's coming. It's going to end badly. Skyhooks in 1974. People, look at the news. There's despair. There's all these things going wrong. So that's part of prophecy, is to see the world as it is and to have the courage to proclaim it. any sort of weird looking into the future stuff necessarily. But I want to focus in on what Jeremiah does in this instance. So, because um, what happens is his, it's his relation, uh, it's, it's sort of an uncle. Um, he has this vision from God that says, your uncle's going to come and he's going to sell you land. Now in those days they had rules about who could buy and sell land. It was about being remaining within the family and the family name those sorts of things. And so his uncle comes to Jeremiah and says, I've got land and you are eligible to buy it. Buy it from me, please. And so Zedekiah gets his 17 <coughs> shekels of silver and he gets the contract drawn up. I like how they, you know, it's a culture that's barely literate and they have lawyers who draw up contracts. And then he gets them sealed. He gets them in a pot is sealed and put in a safe place. See, this is the other part of prophecy. He says, the Babylonians are coming and their army is going to wipe us out. But a time will come when we will be back here. And we will be buying and selling land. And we'll be buying and selling vineyards. <coughs> now, you only buy and sell vineyards if you're interested in grapes. And back then, you only bought and sold grapes if you're interested in wine, and if somebody's making wine, somebody's having a party. It's an action of hope. Jeremiah is saying, yes, things are going to be bad for our time, <coughs> but it will get better. And he was right. He was right. It does get better. Not always in the short term, but it gets better. So let's go back to Skyhooks and... Uh, the horror movie that's the news. It's easy to get depressed because we think nothing's changed. Oh. It's 
a bird coming for the blessing of the pets. It's a bit early. That's the 9th of October. Uh, where was I? Yes, it's easy to get depressed and to look at the world and think, oh, it's terrible. <laughs> but if we take a moment to think about it, in the last hundred years, in the last hundred years, the number of, the percentage of people on this planet that can read has just grown tremendously. In the last hundred years, the chances of a woman dying in childbirth has been slashed. In the last hundred, just in the last hundred years, the world has improved tremendously. There is less violence, despite what you see on the news. There is less violence. We are more likely now to eventually die of old age than to die because some guys decided violence is the appropriate response to whatever. The world is continuing to get better. So part of prophecy is to see the world and call it as it is, and it's actually improved. Doesn't mean everything's perfect. But the first part of prophecy is to see signs of hope. That's one thing we can all do. We can all be prophetic in that, in that way. Doesn't require uh, profound spiritual insight from God. It requires us to look at the world as it is and to recognize that there are signs of hope. And then, look, some people aren't in a position where they see signs of hope. All they see is the horror movies. And when that happens, it's our job to be signs of hope. So if we want to be prophetic, if we want to lead prophetic lives, like Jeremiah, it comes down to two things. To see the world as it is, and to see the signs of hope. And if we can't see the signs of hope, we must be the signs of hope. And then we too will be prophets in the line of Jeremiah. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.